This is the Buffalo Croquet Club Six Wicked Invitational, a USCA sanctioned American Rules Croquet Tournament held in August 2021. It's in Delaware Park in No Surprise, Buffalo, New York. The park was designed by Frederick Law Olmsted, who also did Central Park. We'll talk about him a bit later. Ryan Thompson pulled double duty as tournament director and tournament manager. And your videographer for this series is Paul Newbecker. This is block play, but it is a clash of titans. Chris Patmore has the lowest handicap in the tournament and is favored, but Tim Rampuano is going for a three-peat as tournament champion. We'll let your eight-year-old decide who's Godzilla and who's King Kong. He started with Tim King. As mentioned, Rafuano playing blue and black came in with blue and did a standard corner one positioning. I'm not sure exactly what Chris was trying to accomplish. And I think this is a jump shot attempt. They're making this look harder than it really is. So with no opponent ball in position to come in, Blue sets up for hoop two. He was probably trying just to jaws it. I just checked, and the only verb form of the word jaw in the OED is the one that means to chatter or talk incessantly. The croquet version hasn't made it yet, even though Wiley used it in print in 1985. I may have to submit that. There is a precedent for American graduates of Yale making significant contributions to the OED. You can check it out in Simon Winchester's book, The Professor and the Madman. The Yale graduate being the madman, of course. A couple of these hoop one balls went quite wide like that. I don't know if it was Chris's technique or the clearance setting on the hoop that lets that happen. Because there are only two balls in the game, he can't put red in front of the hoop wired from blue, or blue will get a lift. You're only allowed to do that if your handicap is lower than minus two.
there it goes again. Yellow has blue as a pioneer at hoop two, so hitting red would generate a three ball break. Graphic is a standard deadness board with the addition of clip position for each ball. Ah, you're doing a whole lot. Is this for Dilly? Uh, if I get a flash drive big enough, I'll send it to him. He has sent me enough stuff to keep me busy all winter. This time he's hitting it that way because the hoop was in the way of his stance. This view gives you a feel for the long stretched out nature of these courts. They're 105 feet long, but only about 56 feet wide because you're trying to cram two courts into a lawn bowling pitch. Olmsted did the same thing in Central Park in New York City. So these croquelons certainly have that in common. What a shot. Unfortunately, yellow was for hoop two. He's lucky that didn't bounce off where red couldn't get to it. Keep a picture of these two balls in mind, particularly What's the chance that black can make hoop two off of blue? This is a classic dilemma. Based on his assessment of Tim's chance of making hoop two, he either takes on the deadness to move yellow or he leaves it there thinking Tim's not gonna get a break going.
So Chris's gamble of well, well, you know, leaving a hoop for Pioneer didn't pay off, but it's a bet that most people would have taken that Tim is getting a break out of that position he had on the west boundary by hoop two. It's actually kind of remarkable, and it's why he's the two-time defending champion. I like, didn't realize it was gone until you came back. I'm slowing this down to show that little move that Tim uses at the end of a hoop stroke. I think he does it to put extra roll on the ball. It's probably not standard technique, but it sure works for him. Chris is playing. Overrushed that one, so now he can't send out a pioneer, so he falls back on ball to ball for a couple of hoops. He's scheduled to play in court three. So when he finishes that, he'll be playing the guy in the white hat. That'll be a good matchup. I just, I just filmed Rick Flagging play Bob Gannon, but Rick Flagging and Waxing. I think Brian will put up a better fight. Rich made enough mistakes where Bob should have had a chance at that game, but he was not capitalizing on mistakes. He was making a lot of mistakes. Before the tournament started, this matchup was probably was probably like you would guess to be a potential the championship matchup. Chris versus Tim. Yes, well, they kind of got a Meg and Spit situation going on where they're losing the road. And then they're, the difference is they've actually planned a wedding this next weekend in New York. I was actually invited to go. Um, and then there's going to be a third wedding in China.
He was clearly going for red, because that's the ball that Blue needs. But he got six hoops, and he's only partner dead. The only deadness is blue on black. Looks like Chris is going to try for the cross wiring of yellow from blue at hoop five. That's pretty ambitious from that distance. But if it works, red can then hit black and get a break going because five is red's hoop. Only one problem with that plan. Now blue is for three. Black is dead on blue, but is for two back. He wanted a little better rush for black on yellow to two back, but that'll probably work. Making sure he doesn't wire red. The proverbial coat of paint. Giving Black a three ball break if he can get going at two back. Yes. Blue will be for three when this is over, but since blue is opponent dead, there's not much point in picking up red on the south boundary where it went when it missed blue from down by hoop three. Of course, getting blue clean by peeling it through hoop three would then make red useful to it.
everybody calls that incidental contact, a term which is not in the rule book. I can recall Teddy Prentice getting mildly irritated every time I use that term. At this point, it may be worth thinking about whether you should go to peg, making yourself vulnerable to being pegged out if the opponent gets in. Frankly, the advantages of the rover game, I think, outweigh that risk most of the time. If you're going to stop early because of that fear, you might as well stop at four back because if you leave a good opponent a ball for a rover, for instance, you're just going to get peeled and pegged out anyway. What risk is he going to take? If he either shoots and misses or tries to wire black from yellow by hook five, then red just gets a break. He is partner dead, but blue is not. So let's get out of dodge down by blue's hoop. Blue just joined up with black as well. Red's for five, yellow is for two, and they're both clean. Another minus two handicap maneuver. I don't, I don't understand what people are. Uh, I mean, I sort of get it, I guess. Hmm? Uh, it's writing up over there. I was getting it. But not everybody writes it over there. Jeez. Uh, Colin Ryan, we should use for his horse for the local and for the tournament. We can just put in the results and everyone you can watch the live stream. You can see the results of all the games. You can see the same thing. He's going to hit a jump shot here because he's hampered by the hoop and he really wants to get out of bounds. What's your what's your game? He, if he's on, he is good. Like he can shoot, but like if you can if you can get him rattled, he will just start. Hello, it's Mark. And it's not. Strategic. 
somebody that's like really falls out. Or something. Have you used balls out there that you do them in places where that number don't be too soon? They, they go all the way over there, they hit it, they won't get a good rush back, so they hit it and then they have like this 20 foot swish back that they would never get. And it's like, great, now you get two other three ball steps. Thanks for playing. <laughs> Side of the wicket. Yeah. And then I hit my ball through the wicket. Yeah. Is that just into the contact on the ball? Yep. Okay. Yep. You have to hit it again to accrue the deadness. Okay. So we could screw it. Okay. 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 I assume he's taking off here and not doing a split shot because he doesn't want to leave red and yellow real close together okay. should yellow fail hoop three because blue is clean. So like I usually go to corner one because you know it's hard it's hard to go through hoop one. This you're not gonna believe. Wow. Look at that. And had he gone out since black is dead on yellow, it probably wouldn't have hurt him that much. An obvious option here would be to send blue out and run the break to the peg with yellow, but I think he's thinking about which ball he wants to run that break with. He's looking at where to put black to wire it from blue across hoop five. So he's planning to switch and run the break with red, probably trying to peel black and then peg it out at the end so he can set the unhittable leave for yellow with no ball to take the shot. Red would blast yellow down the line and 
kind of near where she rolled, drop him, take off, and start playing the brakes. They would attack with two bucks. At your level, they might rush to the hoop, or they actually you try to pass, you don't have to play. And apparently, the pace, she's patient at hoop two. So at that point, if you're red and yellow, you're kind of almost waiting for them to, to go. To, to and get then, through or fuck up that. Yeah. And, and then you hope, when they do it, that they have to weave one of their two balls out near hoop two. Because otherwise, even if they make it, then they have to hit their partner again. And it's, it's unlikely that they're going to get to get through three. So now, that's like part of this partner's revenue trap. So if that's the one, it's not going to make sense. It's a, it's a big deal. Um, oh, I'm sorry. So now red is set up for a break to the peg with the opportunity to peg out the danger ball. Assuming he gets it peeled through rover, the question is when will he try to do the peel? Red has a nice rush on yellow to blue in corner four. Yeah, like, it's not always super intuitive why things are the way they are, but then you play enough and it becomes evident why the openings are the way they are. You just, so like, what you see sometimes at your level, so I used to do this up at Super 2, Webster actually did the main play, which I wanted to do, like blue went in, and then it went and set up step 2. I went through the hoop, I got about half, halfway down the court, I shot at him, and I missed, and just bounced out. So now there was two balls. If he were to try to peel black through Rover after he makes five, it would be called a posthumous peel. Now, he does have an escape ball down at his next hoop, but I can't see him trying that. I shoot at him, I hit, and then I run a three ball break all the way to peg, which is why you don't do that. That's <laughs> why you don't put the, the, that ball out. And you use all three balls. I use this one. I used three balls, like so. Um, I, I went in through one and went to peg on that one ball. <laughs> no, no, because I have a second ball. Right? Yeah. But I set a lead to my second ball, and then I started playing the break with the second ball, and I got through six, and I stuck through six, which is a big fuck up. Webster goal. This guy right here. Yes, and that would have been great. So, you decided to bail on Rover here. And I think that was probably smart. But I was disappointed you didn't make it because I had no fucking idea what you were setting up after it. You'd, you'd left through kind of near the boundary, right. that half court mm -hmm. over there. Yeah. Well, blue, blue was dead on opponents. So oh, only, only, oh, So I couldn't give oh, anything to him. Got you, got I was going to come through Rover, and I was just going to go, and I was going to separate, red okay. wire them. Okay, dead on opponents then, is what I was missing. Yeah, and then I was going to just set a on court rush after doing and take off the yellow. I, yeah, I didn't look at the board, but I, and I had it in my head that you just wanted to croquet him out next to red, and, get down there, but that makes a lot more sense that he was there. And I considered sending blue to red, but then I looked at the board. Yeah. Really blue uh, went dead on the opponents, so 
Yeah, set up the set up the brakes of one. Yeah. Which was only a that was a carbon shot. Yeah, this one here I just I mean I should have kept it but I should just let the fucking take off and run back the other way. I wasn't I didn't need to run a break on over. And then and then this does this over oh, here. Oh yeah, when you rolled black out over here. No, I'm talking about when I when I didn't make the roll for this. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then this over here, I was shocked. I made it a wicket and it didn't roll out of bounds. Huh. He got a really good shot there. He, didn't, he hit a, oh, that, he had yeah. a jaw yeah, 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 three. Yeah, that it didn't go out of bounds next to my ball. Yeah, that's so, uh, uh, if, if he's making those kind of shots, he's crazy. Yeah, that's a, that was an incredible shot because it this corner. I beat David and I lost the Norris. I was really hoping that. Uh, who's your fourth one? That's it, man. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I could press him. Like, really good. Uh, I'm thinking I. I remember you. Except, what's her? Is a. First and second flighters should take note of how often championship players call a referee themselves rather than making the opponent do it. Remember that yellow is two hoops ahead of blue. So now he only has to make one more hoop to tie the game. What is the score of him? Uh, that's a four. Oh, 
Ah, mon dieu. The board now includes a points column to show that blue and black are up by one. He used the one back clearance for black. Red is now sitting as a pioneer at blue's hoop. So black will just join up with blue over on the south boundary somewhere. Ten minutes, court two. Okay. Yellow is only dead on black. Oh. That's a game winner in AC. Unlucky. His hoop four pioneer is gone, so go for rover instead. I think he's just trying to give yellow something to work with, but red went a little too far. Yellow is too close to be leaving blue with red now without picking up yellow. So now we'll try it. What? And of course, yellow is dead on black. Oh.
That's a game loser in both disciplines. Now blue and black's up by two, and red and yellow's deadness is crippling. Wow. In any other sport, a shot of that quality would have gotten a standing ovation. Blacks on the south boundary where it went out in its previous turn. Yellow is three ball dead, going to black. Yeah. A little too far. Opportunity for red. They're not in the last turns yet, but theoretically, a two ball break to the peg for red wins it if he can get black and yellow separated. Ooh, a takeoff. I wonder what he's planning to do after he makes the hoop. Another applause worthy shot. Followed by the third missed hoop shot in the last 15 minutes. That's the difference in this game is those three hoop shots. This game's over if black can get red out of that hoop in the proper direction. This next bit is really fun. They're almost in last turns. Yellow shoots next and has a shot on its hoop six. If yellow makes six, red is down there making one back possible and he has blue as a pioneer at two back. Yellow could win the game if he made hoop six. So instead of pegging out black, Tim is gonna use it to block yellow's shot on hoop six. Then all yellow can do is call first block. But because yellow's probably going to be first ball in last turns, he won't have a second turn to take advantage of that block. Clever. Looks like he didn't quite have the block. Okay. Tim Rafuano over Chris Patmore, 16 to 13. In this clash of titans, my seven-year-old grandson thinks that Godzilla won. To see who won the tournament, watch the semifinal and final matches coming up on this same playlist. Thank you.